And Resto Mod Restore Zamber. So, um, got it running in the last video. Still need more work to do on that. Still got low compression on cylinder one. It's got like 130 psi, but it won't retain it. I'm still trying to figure that out, but this video is all about uh, installing the door glass. I finally get the uh, glass seals or the door felt installed and uh, get the radiator installed, hose installed, water installed, all the stuff uh, related to the cooling systems installed, and start on some interior stuff, some of the trim panels, a whole bunch of stuff, but it's mostly about door glass. Um, I learned a lot about installing door glass. <laughs> and uh, thanks Keith for the uh, rubber seals. Just installed them. Uh, I'm not sure what they're from, but they fit. So now I got the rubber seals around the doors. And uh, this is what this video is about. It's not glued really in yet, but I got the rubber around the glass. So the glass is not flopping around anymore. And of course, the uh, radiator hoses are installed. All the rubber lines for the uh, water installed but yeah this video is about installing this rubber this is uh it's not glued but it is fun to install that and just how to do the whole doors so like subscribe and uh share for more videos right amber you awake yet i don't think she's awake now that I got the engine running, I'm going to take out this little coil tester. At least I, I know I got spark now. I went ahead and put the fuel line back to the tank. I got two gallons in the tank. So I'm going to try to get it running and pull gas from the old tank. That's going to be another problem. So that's a problem. And then no idle. There might, so I think I want to try to get the timing correct. I need somebody to help me get it running. Or I, could, I guess I could hotwire it from here and rev it. One hand on the starter, one on the throttle, and then check the timing. I think I need somebody to help. Okay, I'm not happy with all these extra wires here at the distributor. Uh, I just can't seem to find a use for them. I do need more power. I need a power for the carburetor for the choke. That's the horn. These three I don't seem to need. This blue with white is everywhere. It's here again. Goes down to the tranny. I found out the fuse box. This one. I don't even know what it's for. I think it's for the switch thing, which goes up here, which is to go to the gas pedal. In theory, I could probably reuse that. Uh, I think I should use that one. Here's my dilemma. I'm trying to install this new deck I've had for years. It's got four wires. Uh, lighting, ground, and power, and it's a signal wire. The green. I was going to run this to the distributor, which is kind of tacky. I hate to run one wire by itself. I'm debating whether or not to run this by itself and then run that to the fuse box to get power ground and lighting. Or should I recycle one of these wires? If I can find this wire up at the fuse box, I could run that loom to the fuse box. Hook up this. I think it goes to the negative saw. Short those two together. And then hook the end down there to the green. It is green. Yeah, let's do that. Instead of running another wire with this loom, it seems kind of stupid. So node to self. Wow, there's a lot of green zip on there. But that on I think the negative. Short those together and I find gotta find the end up there. Hey, 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 where is that other end? Oh, has it already got power? Oh, there's power on that wire. I didn't notice any 12 volts when I was checking it. I double check that. I think that's, unless there's another switch or relay somewhere. Oh, I think there is a relay for that wire. Here's my new hoses for the L16. These are listed for a 510 with a KA. And the 510 and the 521 use the same radiator. So I figured they would work. 
even though they say KA. That's not a KA yet. So, look at these hoses. They're like 23 bucks shipped. Silicone. I like silicone. I've already got silicone vacuum line. So, I think that'll work. These are the original hoses. This may be the original from 1950. It's 1970. I don't know. Or replaced at some point. This one was ripped a little bit. Unfortunate. Still kind of. Still pliable. I wonder if these are original hoses. That'd be amazing. But, uh, I just put it on the block and it looks like it's got the right bends. So, and this one is, I don't know, let's go that way. Whatever. I don't know what the difference is with KA. I've only worked on KA front wheel drives. So now, here's the original drain. I need to find a rubber washer. And I think this is the original cap. I'm not sure. It came with another one. It said something weird on it. So here's the original brass radiator. Oh. Just hosed it off. Started to clean it. On the grass. And now I'm obviously trying to inspect it to make sure there's no damage in the tubes. Man, these these things are so big. I could actually I could bend those and straighten those. Definitely needs a lick of paint. Because paint is all. I think it's lacquer paint or something. Like it's all. So there's the original radiator. It's got a 90 at the bottom. I don't remember that, but I guess that's the way it was on my 620. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Don't remember. But uh, yeah, bolts on the firewall. I mean, port support. Yeah, let's paint this thing. So I can put it in. Here's the original interior eight pillar panels. Ironically, I just took one of these off my son's D41 last night. A little bit different technology, the plastic. But yeah, they're actually, since they're dried out, pretty good shape. I think I'd definitely use them for a template for some new ones. But I think I'm going to just clean them and paint them and paint them black maybe and put it back in. Here's the uh, paint I'm going to use to paint the radiator. Oh. Can you read it? Oh, maybe I should stop shaking it. Got some black for the radio. Alright, so I got a couple of coats of high heat gloss black on the radiator. I think it was lacquer originally. I think, uh, oh, before I put it in, I guess I gotta install the fan first. Okay, the radiator's installed after the fan. Kind of funny how this bends. I remember my 74 was straight. And I think it's 75 or 76 on the 620s. They made this bend. But it bends on these. But the radiator goes straight. Interesting. First time I've ever installed a 521 radiator. Um, I got the fan in there. I guess there's no shroud. Now let's see if these KA24 hoses fit. For a 510. That looks pretty good. Looks pretty good to me. Goes right around that belt. I mean, that All right, so that's the water tube I'm cleaning, de-rusting. The hood latch, hood latch, male and female pieces. Here's the uh, kick panels. I just washed them in soap and water, and got rid of whatever that was on there. They look a lot better. And here I made some uh, heater hose plugs out of some old 14 millimeter bolts. I put those on. Looking pretty good back here. I don't know if you can tell, but the license plate light is working as well. I still haven't hooked up the reverse lights. That may or may not work. Alright, so here's the original Dotson logo. <clears throat> Painted it by hand, a couple of coats of red. It's kind of textured. I went hit it with a coat of satin clear. Gotta see if I can bring back a little shine. I finally got my headlights figured out. So the switch in here, it's literally a switch. That turns on your headlights. It turns power to a switching relay over there. 
You can see my load beams are on. That one obviously doesn't work. And then the power goes to this relay. And then that relay just toggles between high and low. And you use the regular high beam. Like that. You can see that you can hear the relay over there. So all that relay does is toggle between high and low. There is no relay to turn the headlights on or off. The switch is actually a switch. Uh, that's just like I used to do in my hard body. I don't use relays. I just use bigger wires and bigger switches that can handle more current. So the reason why it took me so long to figure that out is even though I had this beautiful color code, I was reading it wrong. When it says 4312, I was literally not paying attention to the fact that there's, you know, this is one, two, three, four. So I was putting them in the wrong order. I was putting them, I wasn't doing four, three, one, two. So this is what it should look like. White, gray, or whatever, red, yellow, red, white, red, black. I was just looking at the picture and doing like the picture. I wasn't paying attention to the, the numbers clearly on the relay. I don't know how much time I spent wasted trying to figure that out. All because I unplugged the relay. I was about to cut it out and put on normal relays. And I'm like, wait, there's no relays to turn these lights on. There is a switch. So like, what does that thing do? And I took it apart, it looks brand new inside. There's nothing wrong with the switching relay. All it does is go high and low. So now to get the horn working. Oh, by the way, I don't know if I got this mentioned, but I got both. Oh, why the turn thing goes on now? Jeez. Now I've got both oil and ignition lights with a key. I put a new oil pressure switch, fix that, and the fuel gauge does work. And I even got a tack working down there. Water temperature I'm working on now. Turn all these lights off. And uh, yep, yeah. we're getting there. I just hooked up. I don't know if I mentioned this already, but I painted the radiator, put the radiator in, put in the silicone hoses. Now I'm just uh, trying to connect all the water lines. I found some like 14 millimeter silicone hose and uh, made got some old 14 millimeter bolts. I'll plug up the heater core ports for now. This hose is kind of tricky because it goes from a big diameter to a smaller diameter. And then there's another hose here, which I have, and then a hose there. So one, two, three, four, five. I think that's all there is. Once I have those five hoses hooked up, I'm gonna put water in here and stir it up again. So here's the water manifold that goes to the carburetor base. This goes to the thermostat housing, and this goes down to the lower radiator inlet. This is the tricky one because it's one diameter there, and it's a different diameter on the housing. Not sure what it is, so I've got this old 90. I gotta somehow, that's the size of one end. I gotta somehow to reduce it down, or maybe I should look. Maybe auto parts stores sell that hose that goes different diameters. I need that hose. This I think came with a truck, an old with 90 there. That one's a straight shot. This one is killing me because it's different diameters on each end. So I gotta figure that out. All right, so I got, I just got the glass in, the pre-tinted, and the rubber seal. I'm gonna try to do this again differently now. And the regulator in. Now I gotta put in the rod in this little clip. I even put the retention to hold the glass from going down. So I'm gonna see if I can document the steps of putting in the wing mirror, the glass, the regulator. They gotta go in a certain order. Next I can put in this rod. So here's the brand new rubber seals I got. I got these from eBay. Uh, they may have come from Thailand, I'm not sure. But here's the original window stuff. Sorry to sneeze. This is the original window stuff. You can see it's just some kind of weird felt stuff that was glued in. The replacement stuff, it's just one piece of rubber. It comes in a fragile box. I don't know why. But you can see, six foot bed. About a little over six feet long and I did not cut it and there's no molds or anything on here I bought this from a lot of places said you know 65 to 72 72 to 79 whatever 625 20 720 some said 620 720 this one said I think 65 to 84 it's basically all the same it's just a square tube it's not pre molded there's no bends in it there's one piece of rubber so uh, before I 
do the other side. I'm gonna put this rod back in. It looks like these are identical. It's a left and right lock mechanism. This is the window retainer. And these are the bolts. And by the way, if you need more bolts, the bolts that I took out of my dash and replaced are the same. So some of these that were damaged, I'm reusing the brand new bolts from one of the dash. And uh, I think these are the same, I think, as well. So I gotta put in one of these. And I think this will be the last piece, except for the trim panels. Now I had to take this out so I get the window out. So this should go in last. So I take this out first. It bolts in down here. And it kind of like straddles the glass, so it prevents you from taking the glass out. <laughs> I just remembered. This is my whole Dutch, I think this is. I was trying to figure out why it didn't work. You can't lock the door with the door open, so you can't lock yourself out. I just remember that feature. Wow, what a memory. Anyways, these are as a left and a right. The hook goes the wrong way because it has to go like this. This has to go towards the outside, or the inside, and this is the outside. This grabs the lock. And I think this thing is aiming downward it can actually go both ways it basically goes like that but uh yeah the only difference between the left and the right is this rod i guess is different or it's going a different way yeah this rod is going the opposite direction oh, but i got it back in and i can't lock the door unless the door's closed awesome these are the original uh, kick panels. Man, they're a lot bigger than I thought. A lot bigger than the new trucks, that's for sure. So I just uh, put one coat of full satin black primer paint on here. This is all, I wash these in salt and water. I still miss some stuff. Anyway, these four things have gone through a hard life. I'm actually seriously thinking about painting these red or upholstering these red. Maybe make the door panels red. They were originally red. The truck was originally white and red. The seat is not red. I don't know what the seat was. I think the seat was a red originally, wasn't it? I don't know, it wouldn't hurt to put another coat. I washed these a couple days ago, let them dry in 100 degree weather. So I'm gonna paint them front and back, kind of seal them, keep the moisture. I do plan on making new ones or buying new ones, but that's not gonna be part of phase one. Sorry, so these are going back in as soon as the paint dries. Red is gone. But I'm seriously thinking about painting these red. Or pulsing these red. Um, maybe we could do a red center console or something. I have to think about that. Radiator and drain are installed. The drain is missing the rubber seal. I just bought, what was it? 3 8 It was a 3 8 neoprene washer at Lowe's. Three of them for like three bucks. Fits perfectly. Seven sixteenths was too big. So I just painted the hood latch. Man, I may need to recoat it. it. Looks pretty bad. But these threads built in. I don't think they're metric. I think they're quarter inch by. Looks like uh, twenty eight threads per inch if they're standard, or point nine if they're metric. Pretty sure these are standard. Is the same exact bolts in the hood latch, ironically, what I just did, the window regulator, the dash, the top to bottom, and there's the dash bolts right here. 
and the quarter glass. The quarter glass, the window regulator, the hood latch, and the dash all use the exact same bolt. Same length, everything. Which is good, because I've got extra ones from the dash, which are in like pristine shape. Not all messed up. But I think I'm going to upgrade this hood latch from the Phillips to uh, something else. Probably convert some metric, just so I don't have to deal with Phillips in some kind of weird size. Okay, this is how to remove the uh, window. Take all the bolts out. There's three screws, one bolt. Two more bolts on the bottom. So three bolts, three screws. You gotta have the window all the way down to the very bottom. You gotta take out the stopper, take out the door lock mechanism. Get the glass all the way down low. And the glass is basically right here. So you gotta do it like this. There's a little dent right here. I'm trying to get it back to. That's a normal dent, I think. It's, once you get to that dent, there's a dent right here. It looks like it's factory, so I think you're supposed to aim for that. So before I put this back in, I gotta take the glass back out, and I gotta tape that little bump. This little light helps to see what you're doing. The problem is getting this glass out. There's nothing to hold on to, so I'm going to put a handle on it. See what I did, I got to see. on the bottom. Makes it very hard to get out. Okay. I'm gonna put a piece of duct tape over this little it's the uh, frame it's the mount. We got old and new. I gotta make sure I don't accidentally put the old one back in. So I'll put that over there. There's the new one. It's about almost seven feet long. I didn't cut the other side. I'm not gonna cut this one. It's a pain to deal with this long, but it does work. I'm gonna line this track. No glue. I'll put it down all the way down the bottom. Just pop it in. If I knew what I was doing, I'd probably be gluing it, but I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not gluing it this time. And then this is uh, very easy to pop in and manipulate. Get any little grooves. This part is actually easy and fun. There you go. That's nice and lined. That's about as far as... Uh oh, oh my gosh. What the hell? There's more still in there. I didn't know that was in there. That didn't get painted. Whoops. Okay. So now I gotta put in... Now I gotta put the glass back in. Did I do this the right way? I hope so. 
I got the tent on the inside. I made myself a handle so I can pull the glass back out the door. That was my invention because there's no other way to get this glass out once you put it in. Can't find any videos on this for any car. I don't know, maybe I did my car enough. You gotta put the glass in that truck over there all the way. And then let her down. I don't know where to grab this thing in the door. She's at the bottom. On the track. I should probably put my rag in there again. The rag, if you put a rag in this corner, it keeps it up. So it falls out of the track. I've got the glass propped up nice and straight with a rag. Now, the fun part. Are you still watching? Or are you bored? Now let's stick this guy back in. I not hit anything. Oh. Yay! Man, that is stressful. The glass is in the track. Gun again. Hold on that one hand. I guess you could just go wherever you want. Okay. So now I gotta bolt this thing in. The screw lines up. The bolt here. Screw, screw, screw. I'm gonna get the bolt to hold this in. Try to do. Oh, there's tape over the holes, you idiot. Some jackass put tape over the holes so it wouldn't scratch the tent. So, not to poke a hole through the tape or take the tape out. So, I need this to go all the way up. 
I could put the regulator on and then deal with the bolts. The regulator will hold the glass up. I gotta install the regulator. Obviously just flipping around the bottom of the door. So maybe I will do that. Oh no, did I put this window in backwards? Oh my god, the window's in backwards. No wonder it didn't want to go in. I put the window in backwards. Well, that was a good test. Oh my god, I put the window in backwards. I gotta do this again. <laughs> I wonder it went in so hard because the stupid window's backwards. Why didn't you tell me? Why weren't you yelling at me? Okay, here's how to install the window the correct way. Make sure the little bump goes towards the front. Put your seal in. I should have noticed that the tape was on the outside. I'm obviously, I just woke up about half an hour ago, obviously. And I don't drink caffeine, so it takes me a while to wake up sometimes. That's my excuse for being an idiot. I don't do caffeine anymore. I don't do coffee, tea, or soda. Okay, I think that's at the bottom of the road. What the hell are you doing? Stick this in for the hundredth time. It's good to know that you can actually put the door in backwards, but... Please, just stop being so mean to me. Just help me, door. My flashlight is blinding me for no apparent reason whatsoever. Okay, this is a little annoying. I'm nearly really down there, but not in my face. Gotta make sure I don't have a twist in this stupid thing. Is a, a knot in my seal. Thank God I didn't glue this thing. That would have been catastrophic. Okay. Gonna avoid the door lock assembly. I'm aiming for that window. Let's get it in the door first. Putting the seal on at the same time. I know this is not the right way to do this, but I don't know any other way. I couldn't find any videos, so I'm just winging it. Hopefully. What the heck are you stuck on? I gotta go backwards more. in the doorway now. I'm gonna hook that glass. I'm gonna get that edge of that glass. Can't see a damn thing. Can I get my base there please? Flashlight's in the way. Okay, it's on the glass right there. Scratch, scratch. Now do the old tilt and roll. Still on the glass. The glass all the way down and all the way back. So 
but it should just go in. Oh, why is it so hard? It doesn't want to go in. I hate work with wood glass. Oh, it's stuck on that steel tab. Oh my god, we did it again. Okay. I think the glass is on the track. Okay, cool. Call the customer, tell him to come pick up the truck. It's done. Now, hopefully, I don't have a knot in this mess. So now. Scare me like that. Don't scare me like that. Now we can do the old pull the seal trick. Pull the window. Oh. This job is so much fun. I don't know if you can see me, but I'm trying to pull the seal down. Pull it out of the track. Grab its tail. Window down. There we go. Just yank on its tail. My hand is stuck. So I need another. If I need another inch to pull. Oh my gosh. Stop the clock. Stop the clock. What was the time? That's a new personal record, I think. And then he breaks the glass. Ugh. Oh. oh, my hand. Stupid, do not do this with a Fitbit on. Stupid Fitbit. It's on. It's in. It's on. Whatever you want to call it. Whew. That is so stressful. And I didn't scratch this one like I did scratch the other one over there because the stupid little the bracket that holds this scratches the glass. So I got tape on it, so now I can't put the bolts in. So uh, every time I do something, I mean, I can poke a hole in the tape and bolt it in. But now I think the next thing to do is put the regulator on. Just sit on the bottom of the door, which is actually pretty damn easy compared to most. I'm gonna get some breakfast. I'm gonna go.